my name is Caroline Sweeney. I'll be graduating next month with a Master of Public Affairs from the Ford School. My question is, there's an ever-widening divide between media, public institutions, and voters, which means information is getting lost in the space left behind. How are we, as future change makers, leaders, and public servants, supposed to contend with an increasingly skeptical, untrusting American public? Yes, I took Governor. the last one first. You got this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good question. I mean, you know, it, 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 it is astonishing to me when you see the percentage of Americans, and I don't know, if is it, is it a third? Is it 40, 30 percent, 25 percent? It's a large percentage who still don't believe that, uh, that, that the election in 2020 was fair. And uh, the, that I, I think that it's over a majority of Republicans don't believe that Joe Biden was the legitimately elected president. And, you know, that's what could be more uh, threatening to our democracy. I remember in the 2016, I moderated the final debate between Hillary Clinton and, and Donald Trump. And one of the questions that ended up being the big headline that came out was Trump at that time was saying that the election was rigged. And I specifically asked him, will you recognize the results of this election? And he said, I, and he said I'll keep you in suspense. And I responded to that by saying, you know, the idea of the peaceful transfer of power is, is one of the basic tenets of our democracy. And are, are, you, will, are you saying you're not going to commit to that? And he repeated, you know, I'll let you know, I'll keep you in suspense. Well, you know, that, that's very, I mean, it strikes at the very core of our democracy when, when, and, and, and when you have a, a, a wide section of the country, you know, it's so interesting. I was thinking about the 1960 election. You say, what the hell was he thinking about the 1960 election? <laughs> but I was the other day. And, and, and if you know, this was the Kennedy-Nixon election in, in 60, and there is real reason to believe that that election was, was stolen because it, if you go back and look at it, there was, uh, particularly in two states, Texas, where Lyndon Johnson, who was running for vice president, but particularly in Illinois, where Richard J. Daley was the mayor, there's some reason to believe that he wa waited and saw how many downstate votes there were, and then he piled in some votes that maybe didn't exist in Chicago and ended up carrying the state for... Uh, for Kennedy, and there was a real move at that point because there was real concern about it to, uh, the people went to Nixon, and who was the vice president but was running for president, and said to him, you know, you could contest this election and we could litigate uh, what went on in, Chicago, in Illinois and Texas. And he said, look, we're in the middle of the Cold War, it would be too damaging for the country, it may well be true, but I'm gonna accept the results of this election and I'm gonna concede the election to John F. Kennedy. How far we have come from that today. And, and you know, again, I don't know that I've got a, a, a direct answer for you, but somehow, I mean, part of it is you've got some people in public life right now who seem to be hell-bent in trying to, to uh, destroy people's faith and confidence in institutions like the news media, like democracy, like the pe peaceful transfer of power. Um, it, it's a poison in our society, and I'm not sure how you extract it, but I'm sure that Governor Whitmer does know how you're gonna extract it. <laughs> this isn't the, the, gonna answer all the ills that we are confronting, but I do think that education is really important, whether it is the critical thinking skills that you were alluding to in your, in your response earlier to understanding social media and what you can take and how do we address the, the gap. But also um, it, civics, right? You know, it's amazing to me when someone immigrates to this country, they know more about the United States government than most people that were born here. They can tell you more about our institutions, our history, and I do think that that is a place where there is a real need for us to do more to prepare the American public with critical thinking skills, with a reverence for our history and understanding of our civics in this country. 
And also, I, you know, I, I think that it's, we have to fight efforts to dumb down curriculums that are happening across this country. We're doing the next generation a huge disservice if they don't get accurate education about this country's history and who we are and what the challenges are in front of us and how our systems of government work. There are people who get elected to office who don't understand how the system of government in the office they just ascended to work. And, and that, I think, is, represents an, a, an additional threat that is related to everything we've been talking about tonight. So that's a part of what I think we need to do better as a country.